make up for last year's mistake and trying to talk to people. When you're president of an animal club, you have certain responsibilities um, to try to help talk to people and, like I said, try to make this a fun convention for everyone and trying to document things can take quite a bit of time as well. Well, so far, I think you've done a good job this year. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You just last night, uh, thanks to JR, we found about 10 pictures up in the reactor group. Um, the, uh, for the first time, we're still at the convention. That, that's the number one for us to, that for, to do that. Now, um, there was a uh, cosplay uh, panel the, the first day, and um, I'm trying to recall it, but there were several cosplays that was that was shown in this room uh, that had the angelic things to them. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way from various types of angels to um, angels that had their wings flipped to Civilized fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we never really covered. Uh, angels. Uh, the, uh, now I remember in Battle of All the Sons of Player that the character we call uh, Ikaru would throw out her angel and says, "Please guide your angel wings, be Ikaru." And so, yeah, I have seen some, you know, like I said, characters that would pop out with angel wings in there. Uh, in certain animes, especially in Sakura of Tyson, Little Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, has anyone here seen Black Lobo? Mm -hmm. Quite a few hands there. Um, that's a very unique view on angels. There you have a fallen angel that's pretty much gone insane. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Black Lobo. Uh, basically, what it is is uh, this, kid, this kid, his parents are murdered, and he makes a, a pact with his demon. That the demon helps him get revenge, and along the way, uh, it turns out that well, I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but it involves a, an angel who had fallen like Lucifer. Is it a book or a show? It, it's just a manga and anime. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about which, now here's an interesting uh, anime. It's called uh, Hell Girl. Uh, the question of it is, if you hate your enemy so much, I mean. You would get the opportunity, if you pull the string, you could send your enemy straight to hell automatically, but there's a catch to it. You send yourself as well when the time comes. The so, same thing is also in uh, Death Note, where you get, you, you get the power to kill anyone, but then you yourself cannot pass on to eternity. Mm -hmm. You're kind of stuck in a limbo. Mm -hmm. Because you come to hear Agani, up the entire death note. But, but, no, uh, actually, uh, it happens the first time you use it. Okay. If you use it just once, it's in the walls. Okay. So, hmm. uh, does anybody else have any questions about that? Yes? Um, how did you go about like getting an idea to do a Christianity, an anime panel? Like, what kind of inspired you to do it? Uh, okay, my late mentor, Sam Granger, uh, worked on the super book. Um, and there, like I said, the Superbook is a basically a Christian uh, anime uh, series. And uh, when we did uh, this panel last year, uh, I dedicated the first panel, the, this Christianity panel, to his memory because uh, Sam left us in uh, 1990. And Sam was a very good friend of mine. He loved uh, Christ. He did a lot of good work. Uh, for uh, Jesus, you know, for the Christian broadcasting system, and that was, and plus two, it's not been something that's been covered very well. People don't know about the Super Bowl or the Flying House, and uh, I get constantly asked by parents, hey, I want an anime that would, you know, have Christian themes in it, and I go and say, well, have you ever heard of Super Bowl? And they said, no, uh, the Flying House. And so that's where I got that from, from what you get from Sam Ranger. How about we have another question here? Yeah.
last 30 days being live and trying to solve one last case. And, um, but in every version of the thing that I've seen, uh, my girl's life. And uh, it's always, uh, it's in one, you just being gunned down and you take your life quite there before the end. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, no, uh, nothing to do with an actual child, thank you. <laughs> but, um, the, like you said, there are basically the animators that are, you know, stories of good versus evil. Uh, some stories end like a great tragedy. Uh, when people don't listen to other people and they say, hey, and you just listen to us ahead of time, you would have went through all these, these terrible things. There's a story done by a plant which is called X, um, uh, beautifully animated, uh, but had the guy just listened to uh, what his mother had told him and to have such his uh, friends as allies and not hurt her, he been able to save two other friends, but because he didn't, he won that the battle at the end, but look at the cops. You know, it's sort of like every, almost everybody's dead except for him, he lost two of his best friends. Uh, yes, because even in X, uh, like I said, it was a road to uh, destruction uh, and had, to, like I said, as the main character listen to what his mother had told him, uh, he still won, he was a good guy, but at, at a heavy price. So even in uh, something like Magic uh, Night of the Red Earth, uh, the characters went through this entire trial in the first season and ended up in a tragic ending. Uh, I don't want to do too much way about the plot, but uh, it shows an outcome where you go like, oh, wow, you know, and having just not been blinded by our beliefs, this thing could have worked out a lot better. It, like I said, there are some animations that have like three tragedies that, you know, you guys win but at a heavy price. Now, uh, I'm not uh, sure of any current anime series, but I do know a lot of the older ones that aimed at kids did have, you know, one of those, every story had a war, and uh, a lot of things, you know, we used to see, but unfortunately, a lot of the new anime appears is just comedy-based. Yeah. Well, they're, they're basically, uh, they do have more of the themes in them, but you know, they're basically talking to children. Uh, if you're saying something like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh or something like uh, Pokemon, they usually have a basically a simple, but because they're oh, yeah. for children. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're right. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, Pokemon does have a lot of holes in it, and uh, a lot of times you have you, you do have the main character who may have a, a more dilemma or something like that, and, or you know, automatically goes to the more toys. Mm -hmm. right. um, I'll tell you a story that happened to me one time, JR. I was at, um, this is when I was running a Doctor Who fan club back in the 1980s. This parent comes up to me and asks me, hey, is uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe actually a safe anime for my child to watch? Now, this is my V80s filmation, still is. Right. And, I told him, yes, I think it is, because uh, most of the stories at the end of the show were a clip talking about uh, a moral of the story. And I told her that really the responsibility of teaching your child's morals should be in your hands. If you see something that you didn't like, you should tell your child and explain why you didn't like it. And leave it the decision up to the parents to, to put in their morals, their values. Uh, you know, um, that old uh, ESA style of, you know, the whole public substance announcement of giving the to more like that at the end. I think, you know, more anime content should do that because it's a great way to uh, introduce the kids to more. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe it was cut because a lot of people didn't want their kids learning more that way. But then you have to follow if they're not going on to uh, those PSA styles, how they're, they're going to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to learn in school. Uh, a lot of parents aren't on their kids long enough to teach them morals. 
And so you just count out the only way these kids are going to learn morals. Yeah. I've, I've learned the hard way, they're going to watch it regardless. Yeah. If you let them go spend the night with a friend, they can watch it at a friend's house. Or they can go on the internet and not uh, there. But the thing is, is, if you have family time together, and you sit down and watch something you eat that you may not like it, uh, personally, you can at least go and talk to, the, the parent should go talk to the child and say, well, this character here, uh, should have went and done this, and this character over here should have went and done that. Um, when I was growing up, my mother, to, even though um, she wasn't a very big fan of watching cartoons, she would you know, sit down and watch it with us together, and she would, if she saw something she didn't like, she let me know. Oh boy, did she let me know automatically uh, when she wasn't pleased. I remember one particular Star Trek I should say, uh, that the filmation had done, where they had this guy who was just looking like the devil in it. And uh, Mom, after Mom saw that episode, she raked the writer who the polls for it and everything. Even though the story had some of the moral thing, you know, not just the book by its cover, but she felt like uh, it uh, downgraded uh, God's place in, uh, against, the, against Lucifer. So she was very upset about that. Yes? How do you feel about um, Full Metal Alchemist and dealing with the topic of Christianity and morals as well? Hmm. Well, uh, it, it, it really depends. Uh, the original Full Metal Alchemist, um, they really didn't go into it like both of them did. Uh, and that one, a lot of times the captives were punished very severely, you know, for doing that. Now, a lot of, you know, they become very famous through alchemy, but uh, a lot of them had very tragic hymns also because of that. Mm -hmm. And then you had the, uh, I believe it was called the Out of History, which was the, uh, was more of a religious version of uh, alchemy. Well, they were doing practically the same thing, but it was more of a, a gun, in my, in my beliefs, it was more of a, Yes, we're doing this, but a, it, it's through another power. That, it's not through our own power that we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Spirits, you know, like wind, fire, water, and you see that a lot in some animated series that, you know, uh, spirit of wind, the spirit of fire, and the spirit of water um, play an important part in uh, some animated series. Now, there was one point in Brotherhood where uh, Ed was out in the uh, desert, and he looked at, at, that one, at that one set of symbols, that one circle, and uh, he explained what the different things meant and how one man got a higher power, and how by, by doing this transformation to, to get a longer life, how you were trying to overcome God. And uh, I believe that really showed the consequences because that area was destroyed. So there you have, you have to have a divine punishment aspect, I believe. Yeah, like the... <laughs> opening up Pandora's box and, you know, uh, even though in that, in that old myth, if you, uh, yeah, you released the plague and war, but you also released hope as well, so, mm, sort of that type of line of thinking as well. Mm. Well, we'll get down to, oh, I guess you have a question? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they got it. I need help. I actually still do it with my Alchemist Brotherhood, the next to the last episode, uh, was actually more towards where I was going, uh, where Ed is presented, you know, you know his, you know, alchemy, you know, his doorway into the alchemy, 